Welcome friends, welcome back to the HashiCorp Certified Terraform Associate, Part 3. Here we will see all the questions with the real-time use case and we will decode the answer for the certificate exam. So the first question is, which of the following is a valid way to define a provider version constraint in Terraform? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A, provider AWS version equals equals 2.0.0. Option B, provider AWS version equals 2.0.0. Option C, provider AWS version equals 2.x. Option D, provider AWS version equals tilde 2.0. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is, option D provider AWS version equals tilde 2.0. The tilde version constraint ensures compatibility with all minor versions in the specified major version. Let's move to the second question. How can you specify that a resource should only be created if a condition is true? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A, use the conditional block. Option B, use the depends underscore on argument. Option C, use the count argument with a condition. Option D, use the if statement. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is, option C use the count argument with a condition. The count argument can be set to zero or one based on a condition to create or skip a resource. Let's move to the third question. Which of the following is true about Terraform's remote exec provisioner? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A, it is used to execute commands on the local machine. Option B, it only works with Linux-based systems. Option C, it requires SSH or WinRM to execute commands on remote machines. Option D, it is used to execute commands on the Terraform cloud. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is, option C, it requires SSH or WinRM to execute commands on remote machines. The remote exec provisioner uses SSH for Linux, Lunix and WinRM for Windows to run commands on remote systems. Let's move to the fourth question. What is the purpose of the Terraform workspace select command? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A, to delete a workspace. Option B, to create a new workspace. Option C, to list all workspaces. Option D, to switch to a different workspace. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option D, to switch to a different workspace. The Terraform workspace select command switches to the specified workspace. Let's move to the fifth question. Which of the following Terraform features allows you to split a complex configuration into smaller, more manageable pieces? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A, providers. Option B, modules. Option C, resources. Option D, data sources. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option B, modules. Modules help split complex configurations into smaller, reusable, and manageable pieces. Let's move to the sixth question. How can you reference an attribute from a different resource in Terraform? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A, resource underscore name dot attribute. Option B, resource underscore type dot resource underscore name dot attribute. Option C, resource dot resource underscore name dot attribute. Option D, resource underscore type dot resource dot attribute. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option B, resource underscore type dot resource underscore name dot attribute. This is the correct syntax to reference an attribute from a different resource. Let's move to the seven question. Which command can be used to remove a resource from the state file without destroying the resource itself? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A, Terraform remove. Option B, Terraform delete. Option C, Terraform RM. Option D, Terraform state RM. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option D, Terraform state RM. The Terraform state RM command removes a resource from the state file without destroying it. Let's move to the 8 question. Which of the following blocks in Terraform configuration can be used to define a resource dependency? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Depends underscore on. Option B. Require. Option C. Dependency. Option D. Relation. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option A. Depends underscore on. The depends underscore on block is used to explicitly define dependencies between resources. Let's move to the nine question. What happens when you run Terraform init in a directory that already contains initialization information? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A, it will fail with an error. Option B, hapt happy 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 hapt happy 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 hapt happy 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 hapt happy 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 hapt happy happy happy. Let's move to the nine question. What happens when you run Terraform init in a directory that already contains initialization information? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A, it will fail with an error. Option B, it will 
will overwrite the existing initialization information. Option C, it will update the provider plugins and modules. Option D, it will do nothing if the directory is already initialized. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is, Option C, it will update the provider plugins and modules. Running Terraform init in an already initialized directory updates the provider plugins and modules. Let's move to the 10 question. Which of the following is not a valid built-in function in Terraform? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A, length. Option B, substa. Option C, format. Option D, sort. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option D, sort. Sort is not a built-in function in Terraform. The other functions are valid. Let's move to the 11 question. What does the Terraform? Form FMT command do? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Checks the syntax of the configuration files. Option B. Formats the configuration files to a canonical format. Option C. Initializes the configuration files. Option D. Applies the configuration files. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option B. Formats the configuration files to a canonical format. The Terraform FMT command reformats the configuration files to follow the canonical format and style. Let's move to the 12 question. Which of the following commands is used to show the planned execution of Terraform resources? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Terraform show. Option B. Terraform execute. Option C. Terraform apply. Option D. Terraform plan. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option D. Terraform plan. The Terraform plan command shows the planned execution of Terraform resources. Let's move to the 13 question. What is the default path for the Terraform state file? Let's see the option and the options are option A dot state dot tf option B dot e terraform dot tf state option C dot state terraform dot tf state option D dot state file dot tf Let's see the answer and the right answer is option B dot terraform dot tf state The default path for the terraform state file is dot terraform dot tf state Let's move to the 14 question Which of the following is not a terraform provisioner? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A, local exec. Option B, remote exec. Option C, null underscore resource. Option D, file. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option C, null underscore resource. Null underscore resource is not a provisioner. It is a resource type used to define empty resources for applying provisioners. Let's move to the 15 question. In Terraform, we which block can be used to dynamically generate a configuration? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Dynamic. Option B. Generate. Option C. Locals. Option D. Variable. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option A. Dynamic. The dynamic block allows dynamic generation of nested blocks within a resource or module. Let's move to the 16 question. Which Terraform command can be used to produce a human readable summary of a plan file? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Terraform plan out. Option B. Terraform show plan. Option C. Terraform plan summary. Option D. Terraform show. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option D. Terraform show. The Terraform show command provides a human readable summary of a plan file. Let's move to the 17 question. How do you specify the version of a module in Terraform? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A, version equals 1.0.0. Option B, module mod, version equals 1.0.0. Option C, source equals module version equals 1.0.0. Option D, module mod, source equals module version equals 1.0.0. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option D, module mod, source equals module version equals 1.0.0. This syntax is correct for specifying the version of a module. Let's move to the 18 question. Which of the following commands creates a new workspace in Terraform? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Terraform workspace new. Option B. Terraform workspace create. Option C. Terraform workspace init. Option D. Terraform workspace add. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option A. Terraform workspace new. The Terraform workspace new command creates a new workspace. Let's move to the 19 question. How do you define a list variable in Terraform? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A, variable example, type equals list. Option B, variable example, type equals list. Option C, variable example, type equals string. Option D, variable example, type equals map. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option B, variable example, type equals list. This is the correct syntax to define a list variable in Terraform.
Let's move to the 20 question. Which of the following keywords is used to define output values in Terraform? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Result. Option B. Return. Option C. Output. Option D. Export. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option C. Output. The output block is used to define output values in Terraform. Let's move to the 21 question. How do you remove a lock on the state file if Terraform becomes stuck? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Terraform unlock. Option B. Terraform force unlock. Option C. Terraform state unlock. Option D. Terraform state force unlock. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option B. Terraform force unlock. The Terraform force unlock command removes a lock on the state file if Terraform becomes stuck. Let's move to the 22 question. What is the purpose of the Terraform output command? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. To display the current state file. Option B. To display the values of output variables. Option C. To output the Terraform plan. Option D. To display the Terraform logs. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option B. To display the values of output variables. The Terraform output command displays the values of output variables. Let's move to the 23 question. Which of the following is not a valid Terraform backend type? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A, S3. Option B, Azure Blob Storage. Option C, GIT. Option D, Console. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option C, GIT. GIT is not a valid backend for storing Terraform state. The others are valid backends. Let's move to the 24 question. In Terraform, how can you use account parameter to create multiple instances of a resource? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Count equals 3. Option B. Instances equals 3. Option C. Number equals 3. Option D. Create equals 3. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option A. Count equals 3. The count parameter can be used to create multiple instances of a resource. Let's move to the 25 question. Which of the following commands will reinitialize the Terraform configuration, but not download modules or providers? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Terraform init. Option B. Terraform init reconfigure. Option C. Terraform init force copy. Option D. Terraform init upgrade. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option B. Terraform init reconfigure. The Terraform init reconfigure command reinitializes the configuration without downloading modules or providers. Riders. Let's move to the 26 question. Which of the following statements about the Terraform state file is true? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. It is encrypted by default. Option B. It must be manually updated. Option C. It contains sensitive data. Option D. It is stored in the cloud by default. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option C. It contains sensitive data. The Terraform state file can contain sensitive data like passwords, tokens, and keys. Let's move to the 27 question. What does the Terraform validate command do? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Checks the syntax and validity of the configuration files. Option B. Validates the state file. Option C. Validates the output values. Option D. Validates the provider versions. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option A. Checks the syntax and validity of the configuration files. The Terraform validate command checks the syntax and validity of the configuration files. Let's move to the 28 question. How do you define a Boolean variable in Terraform? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Variable example. Type equals Boolean. Option B. Variable example. Type equals Boolean. Option C. Variable example. Type equals bool. Option D. Variable example. Type equals bool. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option D. Variable example. Type equals bool. This is the correct syntax to define a Boolean variable in Terraform. Let's move to the 29 question. Which of the following commands is used to force a recreation of resources in the next apply? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Terraform recreate. Option B. Terraform replace. Option C. Terraform taint. Option D. Terraform reapply. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option C. Terraform taint. The Terraform taint command marks a resource for recreation during the next apply. Let's move to the 30 question. What does the Terraform import command do? Let's see the option and the options are. Option A. Imports variable values from an external file. Option B. Imports existing infrastructure into the Terraform state. Option C. Imports modules from the Terraform registry. Option D. Imports provider configurations. Let's see the answer. And the right answer is. Option B. Imports existing infrastructure into the Terraform state. The Terraform import command brings existing infrastructure under Terraform 
management by importing it into the state file. If you have any question or any doubt, feel free to ask in the comment section below. I will answer you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye and have a nice day.